you never did before, but there's one activity, and I said this after Salatul Maghrib, my second Jama'ah. Uh, what is the one thing that uh, I won't be able to jump off a, of a 20 foot slide again? Well, maybe inshallah, but really, we won't be able to do these things. What's one thing that we learned on this trip that you can do all the time, though? Yes, sister? Dhikr and? Dua. A dua huwa li ibadah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I think you can learn this uh, hadith before you leave. Everyone repeat after me. A dua huwa li ibadah. What is the translation? Dua is ibadah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in order to ask Him. For if there were a people who did not sin and they were perfect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring another group of people. So the biggest advice that I want to give you, and I said it in as many poetic ways as possible. I said there's a SIM card here. If you place it to the ground, you can speak to Allah. To my adults, please do your best to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remembering Allah also includes the time that you had when you were young. Many times you see us maybe not myself but you see other young kids like oh look they're making the same mistakes I guarantee that you made the same mistakes in your time right and as you were growing older you thought you know what I'm getting more mature but I just read a narration on the way here about Umar radiallahu ta'ala an when he was the Amir of, uh, of the whole Jama'ah. He was Amir al Mu'minin. And there was a young Syrian boy. Why do I point this out? Because he was very well educated, very sharp young man who used to attend the halaqa. And I point this out because one day he didn't come to the class or he didn't come to the sit down. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala an asked about where he was, and everyone knows that the kid was drunk. That young man just happened to be drunk. And if you think about it, if I told anyone in if, if you here, and I was missing for Isha, right? And Brother Faisal said, Inshallah, Brother Rasam's not making it, he's drunk. What would you think? <laughs> We'd be like, yeah, we knew already. <laughs> no, but for real, what you would think, right? <laughs> right, that got some reaction. Right? What you knew, what you would think, because we would automatically judge. If I heard it about you, I would judge. But Umar radiallahu ta'ala made everyone in the jama'ah say, Make dua for that young man. He has great potential. Why? Because Umar radiallahu ta'ala never forgot about where he came from. He never forgot. So to the adults, make adhkar and hand down wisdom. وَلَقَدْ أَعْتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ That uh, Luqman, his hikmah was he didn't throw everything on his son at once. He gave principles. And that's all I can share. Whenever an older person corrects me, I tend to defend myself. When an older person gives me a principle and says, Look, you didn't fork by it this time, but this principle, it will work for you in life. Stick by this. That's my small recommendation. And to the younger people, straight to the point. L2RQ.com If I let myself go this weekend, if I smiled while yesterday while I was jumping around on the slide, if it uh, was today during jet ski or going 20 times on the slide so I can make my $20 voucher worth it. If Yes, I did. I counted to 20, so it was a dollar each time. <laughs> Long live. My parents will be proud of me. <laughs> if I let myself go today, this weekend, and I did allow myself to smile, I had a 100% intention behind it. So that you could feel comfortable with what we do off this ship. Because now at L2RQ.com, you have 70 hours of work. It starts from the letters, it goes to the talking alphabet, then it continues with the entire 30th juz, then two and a half juz, two and a half juz of the most advanced tajweed in the Quran, then some vocabulary, and some basic tips to memorize the Quran. That should be enough from today till the first day of Ramadan. So this week, this year, when Ramadan comes around, please don't wait for the week before. Don't look like one of those you know, last minute shoppers. Oh, I gotta get religious before Ramadan. Start now. The companions made dua six months before. So that's straight to my young, my young brothers and sisters. And we had a great time, right? We did a lot more things and I made myself as available as possible for that reason. L2RQ.com for all of the young men and to my mothers, so to the elders I gave some advice to the mothers who enjoyed the dua. Don't enjoy the dua because I made it. You enjoy the dua because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard your dua and that's what you felt, that's what you liked about making dua together. Make dua constantly and for the moms every dua we did this weekend it's on AQL 
advocating Quranic literacy online. Aql online.com it's called dua review i was making dua maybe two years ago in irvine and i made a mistake in the dua to allahumma with some dua that, and sheikh yasser gave me a, a big brother correction he's like look you should know your stuff and from that day i decided you know what if i'm making mistake in one two of my duas i'm going to collect 30 adiyah that i think are imperative and that we all don't know Allahumma khfirtuka awsaw min dhunubi wa rahmatuka Yeah, that was the one. I made something weird and he kind of looked at me like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? And after that I realized, you know what? If we're not on point with our dua, the religious amongst us, right? Those of us who are here, who consider themselves close to Allah, then how would we be able to uh, take this title? So do your best inshallah. It's called dua review. Every day is one dua. It's a PDF of the meaning, the translation, the Arabic, and then a video walking you through uh, the pronunciation. So to, uh, I think I left nobody out. Adults, inshallah, share your wisdom with us, please, through principles. Young people, l2rq.com. And to my young sisters, I'm really proud of you. Alhamdulillah. I waited for the day where sisters would smile, have fun, still have hijab, but never have a perimeter of what they could do or couldn't do within some grounds. So I'm very proud of the young sisters who kept their modesty, but also had a great time. And I'm very proud of you, inshallah. Keep on this path and tell your other friends. Not that I wear hijab and I'm proud I can do whatever I want. No. I am proud to wear hijab. And I have fun within the bounds, within hijab. Not I can wear hijab and do whatever I want. Right? But I wear hijab and I'm proud that within this scope, I can please my creator. So Jazakallah khairan. I hope to see everyone again. Um, any uh, jokes or something that push the adults, um, that's my personality. I will do my best to become, I won't become more serious. <laughs> but I'll do my best to be a nicer person. <laughs> I never want to lose this part. Always smile. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see us happy. And um, to the uh, moms, if I push the buttons, adults, if I maybe pushed a little bit too much with the way presentation, the khutbah style could have been a little bit more formal, uh, then my apologies. One da'if hadith, definitely I narrated the second day and I should have pointed that out. Any other shortcomings? Uh, Throw me a bone, inshallah, it'll be good. I hope to see you all again. Please keep reading Quran. If you never see Salam Cruz or my face again, just read Quran. And be in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of the rest and make dua for our scholars, even those who are attaining to be the Grand Mufti of America. Inshallah, please do your best to. Uh, I had to, I had to. <laughs> make dua for them and their families. And Jazakallah khairan on behalf of my parents and my family. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair. Okay. It goes to you or him? Do you need? Okay. Again, I'll keep it very short. Um, before I start, I just wanted to share a story. Um, last year, we had one shahada. A lot of you heard um, that we had a shahada on the cruise. Alhamdulillah, um, this morning after Fajr, like uh, Brother Wissam does every day, um, you know, he was giving his lessons. After the lessons, he sat down. He told everybody, if you want to get into two small groups, um, you know, he would listen. While we were doing the small group, a brother came by. At that point, he was not a brother. He was just a passenger. He came by, and he sat right there, and he said, um, you know, he was just interested in what we were doing. He started listening. I stepped out, you know, started working in the other room. And Brother Majid was talking to him. And um, a few minutes later, I hear Brother Wassam giving some, you know, doing the shahada in English. So I was like, you know, how did he switch from, you know, Fatiha to Shahada? It's like, you know, is he giving a shahada lesson to all the jama'at now? So I came back to see what was going on. I saw that, alhamdulillah, the person who had just come to listen was taking the shahada. This is within a few minutes. So alhamdulillah, you know, we had a shahada during this uh, voyage. And, you know, just shows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives guidance, you know, to whoever, whoever he was, wherever he was. I mean, to, to think, you know, in a, in, in a cruise ship that, you know, that somebody would get hidayah. So... Um, you know, that was one of the highlights, something that we found out last year of the da'wah effort that, you know, Muslims being around like Sheikh Yasser Qadi mentioned in Juma. So Alhamdulillah, that was one of the very, you know, probably the highest point of, of the cruise that, you know, that we were able to influence somebody, you know, to take, uh, to take the shahada. Um, just uh, in general, I just wanted to, so first of all, so, um, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, when you organize one of these events, there are a million things that can go wrong, from weather to you know, there's there's a gazillion things actually, and for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to keep everything in track for us so that we enjoyed this is is from His Nama. You know, and we we thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for this because we've weather tornadoes, hurricanes, rain. 
yeah, everything could have gone wrong. And alhamdulillah, everything went perfect. Wow. So there's, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves um, immense, you know, gratitude, alhamdulillah, that everything went well. Um, secondly, I do want to thank all our group leaders. Um, they have worked really hard in the background. Uh, they're the ones who, you know, do all the works in the background so that when you, when, when things come up, when events come up, everything is in, in order. So Sister Nadine, Sister Maryam, Brother Shah Rukh, Brother Mujahid, Safiya, my brother, and uh, Shoaib, uh, mashallah, they did uh, an awesome job and, you know, they're the key, you know, that everything went smoothly. And um, f there's two more things, and um, finally, to everybody who attended. Um, the fact that uh, most of you don't know me personally, don't know any of the team, and you took a chance, you know, by coming to this project, you know, you invested money, and, um, you know, you believed in the project, so it means a lot to us, you know, the fact that, you, you know, you believed in our project and supported us. So even though many of you are thanking us, you know, for our work, you know, we really feel, um, you know, grateful that you believed in the project and you came with us, and, you know, you honored, you know, to be here with us. And finally, the two scholars we have, Sheikh Yasser Qadi and Brother Wassam. As we said, their schedule is packed. Um, Yasser Qadi is away from his family every weekend, probably of the year, um, for him, you know, to do this for us. And same thing with, um, with Brother Wassam, that they traveled great distances to be here with us and to, you know, agree to do this for us. Um, you know, it's a great uh, honor, and we thank both of them. So, Jazakallah khair, wassalamu alaikum, and I will turn it over to Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala ma ba'd. Uh, I'm not going to go too long because it is very late and we all have to pack. Just a few short uh, reminders, like yesterday, disjointed, but inshallah somehow related. Uh, first and foremost, the whole concept of having a halal cruise. Uh, honestly, this is something that many of us would never have thought it uh, possible. You know, a few years ago as well, I would have thought, how is this going to happen? But as especially parents here understand, it is really necessary that our children feel that they're getting a life and not being deprived just because of the religion. Because what happens is if they keep on being told, oh you can't, you can't, you can't, the minute that they can, 18, 19, 20, khalas, they just go all the way. And we have seen, and every one of us knows, families like this, right? And therefore, and I know, I know I'll just say something which is a bit awkward, but I know this is on the minds of many of us, that no doubt this cruise is not 100% halal. There's no, you know, ifs, ands, or buts about it, you know. We're seeing things and being amongst people that, yani, our hearts don't like it, right? And yet, I will tell you that, frankly, I do believe that, especially for those who have children and whatnot, that this is the lesser of the two evils. That we make our children feel that, alhamdulillah, they're allowed to do certain things within limits, so that by the time they get older, they know, you know what, our religion, just exactly as the Prophet ﷺ said, when Umar said, how dare there be uh, the Abyssinians playing and the Duff playing, you know, what did the Prophet ﷺ say? Let the people know that there is some leeway in our religion, right? So we're not doing this every day of the year, are we? Right? We're not doing this the entire time. This is something that we're doing for many of us, maybe once every five years. Once These guys, okay, once every year, nothing in the about them, right? That's their alhamdulillah, and we need them to do that, right? But for the rest of us, honestly, I went on a cruise uh, last year by, my, by myself with my family, right? And we were the only Muslims on the whole ship. SubhanAllah, this cruise... Being 150 Muslims, we have separate sections of the island. We have the entire island last, uh, you know, yesterday. The entire section is ours. Today, okay, no doubt there was a few uh, people that, you know, were not a part of the group. But nonetheless, we never felt awkward with the hijab, with the, with the prayer, with the beard. MashaAllah, we have our musalla area. This is about as good as we can do for now. The goal, as you heard yesterday, I'm not advocating, uh, you know, on their behalf, but I am sympathetic to their cause, right? I am not a part of the management of Salam Cruz, as you know, but I'm sympathetic to their cause. Why? Because we as Western Muslims, as American Muslims, as Canadian, as, as anywhere Muslims, we need to make sure that we have a healthy balance. That we do not portray our religion as being unrealistic, as being haram, haram, haram. Right? And I say this as, inshallah, a person of knowledge and a shaykh, that when you understand what will happen to the mentality of the child who grows up hearing for 20 years, haram, 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 right? What's going to happen when he finally doesn't have to have a father or mother tell him what he can and cannot do? 
right? We need to have a healthy balance, a moderate, and frankly, what is moderate is relevant, depending on time, place, and culture, right? For us in America, this is about as halal as we can go for the time being. The ultimate goal, inshallah, one day will come when Salam Cruise will have the entire ship. I mean. Right? Inshallah. And when that happens, Alhamdulillah. But in the meantime, we're going to have to bear with this background noise, <laughs> with some visuals that we don't like, right? With the third, fourth floor gambling. We're going to have to bear with it for the time being. This is the bitter reality. And by the way, by the way, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived in a city where drinking was rampant, Mecca. He lived in a city where illicit uh, relationships were everywhere. He lived in a city where according to the Quran, how did the people do tawaf? You all know. Did he run away just because they're doing tawaf like that? This is, ta I mean, at least these people are enjoying those people around the Kaaba. Can you imagine how disgusting that is? Visualize that. La hawla wa la billah. Did he run away from the city because of this? No. Because why? He's a part of that city, correct? He is a Makki, he's a Hashimi, he's a Qurashi. And when he's expelled from Makkah, what does he say? After 13 years of bitter persecution, he says to Makkah, metaphorically speaking, that إِنَّكَ لَأَحَبُّ الْبِلَادِ إِلَيْ You are the most beloved of cities to me. Not just because it's a holy city, but because it is Biladi. It is my land, right? And were it not for the fact that my own people kicked me out, expelled me, I would never have left you. This despite the